and we're back, folk, to Scarlet Hollow, the darkest timeline. In the last episode, we had basically caught up with what had been going on. We went down with Tabitha into town, and she met Sylvie, and something is going on there, something suspicious and potentially illegal. We also spent a little time with our cousin, pressed her buttons just to sort of see what was going on. And some of our theories were concerned. It seemed that, like, Tabitha had had, a, like, an old flame with... Or at least had carried an old flame for Stella. And um, hadn't ever quite gotten over it. It seems that her mother was a bit of a harridan. Um, and, well, the more less said about her, the better. Also, the fact is that it looks like trouble is a brewing with the fact that we left kids to die in the... Um, in the mine, because we got confronted by an angry mother of one of the two girls that is trapped or potentially dead in the mine, and we called her daughter trash. So, yes, that probably isn't going to go down particularly well. But for now, as your cousin leaves to go back to her car, you head off towards the library. You enter the library alone. It's busier than usual, and a small crowd has formed in the corner of the main foyer. Stella comes walking up. You actually came. I thought you might have missed my text. I was about to try calling. I half expected you to have... I half expected you to have finally skipped town, says Kiniko as he comes striding over. Yes, the whole gang's here. I've been waiting to introduce Kerry to the mayor for like the entire time I've known her. It'll be worth it, trust us, says Kiniko. You alright? Alright, shall we, says Stella. Yep, he's a dog. And judging from the series of portraits lying on the walls, Tabitha wasn't pulling your leg. Every mayor of Scarlet Hollow in living memory has also been a dog. You can tell this dog is the mayor from his little sass and his fancy top hat. There's a regal air about him, almost as if he, almost as if he knows the position of authority he's been elected to. You haven't met the serious man by his side, but you have to assume that he's the mayor's handler. He holds out a paw as if to shake your hand. Lovely to meet you, Mr. Mayor. You reach forward to take the mayor's paw in hand, but the burly security detail stops you. No paw shaking, only head pats and ear scratches allowed, says the goon. I'm so glad no one ruined the surprise, says Stella. This town has had a dog as a mayor since the early 1900s. That's just how we do things around around here for some reason. It's the best part of living in Scarlet Hollow, besides the nature. And all my friends and Winnie, Winnie's bis biscuits. Oh, and the close-knit small town community, of course. But having a dog mayor is a close fifth, no contest, she adds. <laughs> Gretchen squirms in Stella's arms, straining to get at Mayor Jimmy. Hey, whoa, Gretchen, calm down, old girl, you're going to pull a muscle. Miss Richmond, I'm going to have to ask you and your dog to step away from the mayor. We I should have known better, those two had never been able to get along. Stella walks off, struggling to hold Gretchen. Kanika is quick to follow, and you follow after them. It looks like everyone else is already talking to Oscar in the next room. Before you can catch up to your companions, you're, interrupt you're intercepted by a nervous man with a cross around his neck. Street smart, whoever this is, you can feel his desperation to make a good and first impression, a self-sustained, self-fulfilling prophecy. Sounds like old Gretchen and the mayor may have some unresolved issues, wouldn't you say, says the strange man. I'm Pastor Daniel. I take it you're Kerry. Everyone has been buzzing about you, says the man. I'm so sorry about your aunt, but I'm sure she's in a better place now. Let's see. Let's go with... I doubt Pralina's in a better place. Sounds like she was awful. Let's not kid ourselves. We both know Pralina's in hell. I'm not a believer in the afterlife, but thank god I've been home to find a priest. Hey, do you know anything about ghosts? Jenny mentioned you this morning. Let's go with there, like, let's go with 
Let's not kill ourselves. We both know Harley is in hell. Let's go with that one. Oh, I'm sure she wasn't that bad, says the pastor. Most people are good deep down inside. It's best not to speak ill of the dead. Let's go with, hey, do you know anything about ghosts? Ghosts? I've never encountered one myself, but I have heard stories of folks who have been visiting, visited by their loved ones from beyond the grave, and it seems like it provides them with some sort of spiritual healing. Like, their, like their beloved relatives are watching over them, even in death. Is it about Paulina, or perhaps your mother? Have you been visited by her? No, I mean real ghost stuff. Scary stuff. I prefer to think of ghosts as our loved ones, reaching out to us from the heaven to let us know we need to worry, need not to worry about them, and that we'll be reunited one day. So they can sometimes frighten people, but holy visitations often do. We must remember to be not afraid of what we don't understand. Yeah. Jenny mentioned you this morning. That woman is the light of my life, says Pastor Daniel. I'm so glad she's here there to help your cousin through this rough patch. I said go. It was nice meeting you, go. Back off, preacher man. I ain't buying what you're selling. No, let's just go remain silent. Remain silent. You have nothing more to say to this man. Don't worry, I'm not trying to sell you anything. Just thought I'd extend the offer in case you needed someone to talk to. The church's doors are always open if you ever change your mind. Have a blessed day, Kerry, says Pastor Daniel as he walks away. Pastor leaves you, you and joins the line to see the mayor. Nothing to do now but catch up with your companions. Go after them. You find them talking, already talking to Oscar deep in the labor in the library. Are you sure you don't want? Are you sure we can't just get? Sorry. Are you sure we can't just get it over with while the sun is up? I don't know if I can handle getting scared shitless in the dark two nights in a row. Says Kanika. I wish we could, especially since I'm not particularly excited about going back there after dark either. But I'm pretty sure it only comes out when the sun goes down. Says Oscar. Yeah, there's no way I'm getting in until that spirit is at full power. Says Stella. I want to be sure we get the best evidence possible. This could be my one socket to get real proof of ghosts, so I'm not going to wait it just because I'm impatient. You're all going to be the death of me, mutters Kanika. And you're, and you're sure there's nothing we can do for Rosalina right now? I don't think so. She's been locked up in the back room all day. Haven't been very interest hasn't been very interested in talking to anyone. I think the best we can do is stick to the plan of ghost to ghost bust the house clean and give her a real bed to sleep in tonight, says Oscar. I just hope it's possible to get rid of this thing. This is pretty serious ghost infestation, if that's what you we are called is that what you would call something like this? I believe it's called a haunting, says Stella, but ghost infestation also sounds good. I suppose we're ghost hunters, so we can call it whatever we want. Anyway, I'll bring all the ghost hunting supplies everyone can ever need, so we we should get... Sorry, anyway. I'll be bringing all the ghost hunting supplies anyone would ever need, so we should be set for preparations. The only thing you'll need to bring is an open mind. Yeah, I'm starting to get cold feet about the ghost hunt. It's okay if you have to sit it out. Like I said... Who knows if it'll work or if it'll just get us get scared for no good reason. And this is the thing, like, Carrie at this point is like, yeah, I didn't believe in any of this stuff until it started to happen to me and now I'm not so sure. <laughs> no way, you're, you're got, you've got to come with. It'll be fun, says Stella. Well, if we're not doing the hunt now, I guess we should head over to Reese's, says Kanika. Absolutely. Come on, Carrie, time to go bother our friend. I'm going to go back to it. See you all tonight. Time to go. So, I finally met Pastor Daniel, you say? It was only a matter of time until he tried to pull you aside about grief counseling, matters Kanika. When my dad died, I had to ban him from the general store for, for a week. 
He wouldn't stop leaving these little pamphlets at the checkout. I didn't know where he finds so many. Like, Kerry snorts. I think he just wants people to like him. He comes off as desperate. It's a vicious cycle. Yeah, when you put it like that, his whole situation is kind of sad to Stella. Even if that's the case, it doesn't mean I have to like him. Whatever his deal is, deal is goes a step beyond trying too hard to get people to like him, says Kanika. The man was grinning for all my dad's or all of my dad's funeral. It's not normal. And I don't mean that in a stigmatizing mental illness kind of way. There's just this little siren that goes off every time I see him that tells me to get away from him. That's exactly how I would describe it too, says Stella. The whole town feels the same way, now that I think about it. He must be pretty lonely. He can look for friends somewhere else, snaps the woman. Invite Tabitha to go ghost hunting. Secretly, do you mind if I invite Tabitha to ghost hunting? Yeah, like, let's not... Let's, we're not going to do these two things. Um, we're probably going to go with... Just head over to Reese's, because like, you're not going to get your cousin involved. Like, Kerry's not going to get a cousin involved in ghost hunting. So let's head for Reese's. Alright, shall we head out? The three of you leave the library for, the, for an early dinner at Reese's. You once again find yourself in front of Reese's, ha Reese's house. A cold hesitation grips you as the building looms over the hilltop. Though it's only early afternoon, it feels much later, the sun already sinking behind the tall mountains that surround Scarlet Hollow. We're a little early, what if Dr. Kelly yells at us? There's no such thing as, as early when you hang out with friends. That's just extra time you get to spend together. Okay, what if she yells at us, says Kanika. It's too late, the door swings open. Hey. Says Reese. Reese, says so. Oh my god, dude, it's been ages. You must be Kerry, right? I've heard a lot about you. Stella's been rel relentlessly making so I get all of Kerry's updates. Gretchen starts yipping, yipping at Reese, straining against Stella's grip as she tries to get between them. Are they here already? Says the voice of Dr. Kelly from out the door. I know you'd show up early, Stella. I knew you'd show up early, Stella, and you brought the dog. Great. Yeah, I thought he might cheer Reese up. I don't know what's gotten into her all of a sudden. The dog stays outside. But it's okay, Stella. You can let her chill in my van for a bit. I'll run the AC and leave her some treats. You know, I always have some of those easy-chewing dog jerky stashed away. But we go everywhere together. Do you want to come in or not? Says the woman. Kanika nervously tugs Stella away towards her van. Well, what about you, Carrie? Are you coming in? Oh, sure. I trust dogs. Why did, Why? Why doesn't Gretchen like you, Reese? I'll wait for Stella and Kanika. Sign it, wait for Stella and Kanika. Yeah, the case where they're gonna go. I'll wait for Stella and Kanika. Let's go. With, let's go with that one. I'll wait for Stella and Kanika. Fine. The quiet, a quiet set sinners. Do you wait for Stella and Kanika to come back from the van? Okay, we're back. Great. Let's get this over with. Says Dr. Kelly. The house feels cold. Not only is there an odd chill in the air. But the building itself feels too sterile, uncomfortably tidy, to the point where you're nervous to touch anything. If it wasn't for the aroma of store-bought dinner rolls baking in the oven, and the unsettling artwork hanging on the walls, you'd be half convinced you'd wandered into a real estate showing. So, can I lend a hand, says Stella? By sitting down at the table and not, putting, not puttering around my kitchen, says Dr. Kelly. I made sure everything was done well in advance, so the only thing left are the dinner rolls, which shouldn't be long. Then we can have a quick dinner, and you can leave my house and go on about your business. But I was kind of hoping to see Reese's new art, says Kanika. We still have time now, right? Says Reese. You aren't seriously considering subjecting your friends to your disaster of a room, are you? 
It's not that bad. You can still see the floor, mutters the young man. Dr. Kelly raised a single questioning eyebrow. I don't mind a little mess, says Stella. Yeah, I doubt it could be any worse than what I burn the way I keep my room, says Kanika. Yes, fine, okay. As long as you stay out the kitchen, I don't care what you get up to. Cool. We'll just be downstairs. You won't even know we're here, says Stella. You make your way towards the basement stairs. Basement is what you might expect out of a tortured artist who spends all his time confined to his studio. Discarded canvases line its, war line its edges, while trash and sketches leak out from the piles in the corners of the room, hiding the bare cement floor. Ghoulish faces coat the walls in paint, sneering out at their creator. Your mum's so scary, says Kanika. She can be a little intense, kind of overprotective, which I guess makes sense. Anyway, make yourself comfortable, says Reese. You'll have to forgive the mess. I've been distracted lately, haven't been cleaning much. Let's go with... You need to sn Do you need us to sneak you out of here? This place feels like a prison. Unfortunately, the prison we're dealing with here is my body, not the room, mutters Reese. Are you sure there's nothing you can do? Your company is plenty. It's so nice to have living people down here for a change. You know we've visited more if your mom let us. Did she tell you she turned us away yesterday? She said you weren't she we wouldn't we couldn't even talk to you. It's a little controlling. You came by yesterday, says Reese. She didn't tell me. But I was probably asleep, that's all. She didn't want to wake me up. I don't think that's her being controlling or anything. Not to cast any doubt on that, but she did say she did say I couldn't bring you any food, says Stella. She knows that's how I sell my friends, how much I appreciate them. And she knows I can walk around all kinds of allergies and intolerances. Not gonna lie, it felt weird. I don't know, my body's p pretty particular when it comes to food. She just prefers to have full control of what I what I eat, so... Uh, okay, maybe that does sound controlling, mutters Reese after a moment. But it's for good reason. If I eat the wrong thing, it could really mess me up. So she has to regulate my food. So many things. Let's go with... Let's go with Carrie. Carrie's going to be blunt. What are you sick with? You sick? Carrie says she looks around. Kinney just looks at you with a gobsmacked expression. Sorry, Carrie is pretty direct. We don't have we don't have to talk about your illness, Reese. It's okay. I've come to terms with the way the rest of my life is going to be. You're so macabre, Reese. You make it sound like you've been sentenced to death. Reese goes quiet. You haven't, right? Says Stella. Not exactly. No one really knows what's wrong with me, but it's been getting worse. I can barely keep most food down. My skin always itches like there are worms crawling underneath it. I could I could live for a long time or a short time. No one's sure. But I'm definitely not going to get any better. Whatever t whatever time I have left is going to be miserable. So I've done my so I've done my morning. My best years are behind me. My future is unknowable. But one day I wind up in a pine box, just like everyone else, and that's okay. I'm on a, I'm on a, and I'm okay with that. Dang, Reese says Kanika. I may be a goth, but that's some real nihilistic shit. We'll make sure to come by more often. For, for, come, we'll, sorry, we'll make sure to come by more often from here on out. Friendship heals all wounds, right? Thanks, guys, but you really shouldn't worry about me. I have my art. I'm doing fine, really. So what's your diagnosis, says Carrie? Kinika just says that. She's uh, really persistent, too. Yeah, the thing is, Carrie doesn't really... She doesn't really care, but the thing is that, like, she's getting bad vibes. 
I'm afraid the answer is isn't very illuminating because it's not any one particular thing, says Reese. It's just a whole mess of nasty little things that add up to one big diagnosis of bad genes. Guess I'll, I guess I pulled the losing card in the DNA lottery. And hey, it isn't all bad. Some of it's just weird, like this. Reese pulls on the skin of his arm. It stretches unnaturally. Hyperelasticity. Hyper kind of cool, right? Whoa, says Stella. Does that not hurt? Says Kinika. Nope, I feel fine. Like I said, it gets itchy under the skin sometimes. But I don't know if it's the elasticity, the medicine, or just other part of me, or, or another part of my condition. Yeah. You've got to look around your art. You mention. Slap the bad boys on the mug, you can make a buck or two, you mutter. That's what I've been telling him, says Stella. If you posted these online somewhere, you could get big, man. I think I'll keep them to myself until I die, says Reese. You know how it is with dead artists. Their art sells for way more. I hope the doc or whoever winds up inheriting my work makes millions off them. I'll be able to rest easy knowing somebody has retroactively given my life value. Kinika looks down. Or you could sell them while alive enjoy the fruit of your labour. While you still exist, it sounds that sounds complicated. I'd rather just spend my time painting, leave the hard work to someone else. Yeah, let's go. If you need someone to pose your paintings this week, let's go with that. Let's see how that goes. I wouldn't want you to have to bother. I don't usually start work until late at night. I wouldn't want to burden you with staying up so late. Yeah, there's there's something going on here. There's something strange going on with Reese. So, I still have told you about everything that's happened the past couple of days. But the thing is, Kerry's nervous about what Stella's been telling people. So Especially about the bit about the about maybe or not shooting a guy with a shotgun by accident. So let's just see how we'll go getting a guy shot by a shotgun by accident, I should say. Let's go with that. Uh, so I still have told you about everything that's been happening the last couple of days. Oh, she's told me all about you guys have found out there. I wish I could see some of it myself, but you know. He gestures in, in futility towards the walls of the basement. Are you sure we can't sneak... sneak Oh, sorry. Are you sure you can't just sneak out one of these nights? The doc isn't keeping me prisoner here, Stella. I'm sick. You know that. Stella looks down. Sorry, man. I didn't mean to. There's nothing to apologize for. And I appreciate the fact. Really, I do. There's just nothing you can really rescue me from. That die's already been cast, mutters Reese. But we were talking about the past couple of days, weren't we? He diverts to a different tangent. Do you have any thoughts on the ditch things we've been seeing? Yeah, they've been coming up to my window at night, says Reese. Wait, really, says Stella? Is that why you text me but they look like something out of your nightmares? Yeah, I thought I was hallucinating. I hadn't put it together. I hadn't put it together, but we might have been seeing the same thing until just now. I've been sketching them, actually. Tell me what you think. He pulls out a sketchbook from one of the pieces from one of the piles in his room. Okay, that's exactly what I saw on my way home last night, says Kanika. What does it mean they've been lurking around here, though, says Stella. Don't know, but I like the company. They're kind of beautiful in a sad way, if you ask me. I agree to disagree with you there. Those things are going to be stuck in my nightmares until the day I die, mutters Kanika. Yeah, let's see. What do you think's been going on with Wayne? Who? 
You know, the guy who's been following Kerry around, being all ominous, so Stella. This is the thing that they... This is the one thing I will say. They don't know that... Um, they shouldn't know that uh, Wayne has been following um, Kerry around. Oh yeah, that slasher creeps. That's Reese. I appreciate, I appreciate the classic Jason vibe he has going on. Here's hoping he didn't live up to the look for all our sakes. You think the town is doomed? I think everything is probably doomed at some point, says Reese. But I guess that's answering a different question. Do I think the town of Scarlet Hollow is on the brink of collapse? Probably not. But it's not like I have a lot of perspective on what it's like out there. They could be rioting on Main Street, and if Stella or Doc didn't tell me, I just wouldn't know. The man admits. I would totally tell you if there was a riot. Chuckle, Stella. Would Dr. Kelly would Dr. Kelly tell you though? Says Kanika. I mean, yeah, I hope so, but the point I'm trying to make is that another person but other people are my eyes out there. What do you think my cousin? Let's go with that one. She was always so distant and mean. I probably would have thought she had it out for me personally if she wasn't like that to everyone else. Or if I thought she even knew my name. But people change. Maybe she's nicer now. She's still terrible, says Kanika. You guys just never took the chance to get to know her. She's actually really fun and sweet. Add Stella. I'll pass, thanks. So, let's think about this logically. The thing is, Kelly's, Kelly's just probing for information. To be honest, like she doesn't really care about what's going on here, but at the same time, it's obvious Stella's been blabbering to this guy, so she wants to try and figure out what's going on. Let's go with that. You've got quite a movie recommendation. You've got any rec you've got any got quite a movie collection. Got any recommendations? Let me think, says Reese. Oh, you have ha oh, have you heard of C no Chi Blood Death? I saw that for the first time recently and it blew me away. Excellent example of both Japanese horror and found footage done right. We could even put it in it on after dinner if you guys are interested. Dang, I would usually be down for that, but we've got to head over to Oscars after this. We promised we'd ghost bust his place. He apparently has been dealing with a, with a bad haunting. I feel like we should really be there for him tonight, considering everything that's happened, says Kanika. He and Rosalina need need both our support right now. You could always ditch. The movie sounds good. Do that one. You could always ditch. The movie sounds good. Just carry. Ah, you're so funny, says Stella. Yeah, the thing is, like, Carrie's trying to get out of going to this haunting thing. It's like, yeah, the last two times you people dragged me into stuff, it didn't end particularly well. Um, so I wonder how this one will particularly turn out. Let's go with that one. So the three, so the three of you go way back, huh? Says Carrie. Almost to the womb, says Stella. The school here is tiny, K-12. Not exactly a one-room schoolhouse, but not far from it. We're lucky. We're lucky. We all got along as much as we did. Some kids weren't able to make any friends their own age. They just happened to be born around the same time as some real jerks, and was, and they were stuck with them through their whole school career. Poor kids. Kanika just mutters, not that we were free from dealing with jerks, like a certain Scarlet I could name. Okay, she was a little rough around the edges, admits Stella, but she was pretty friendly when you got to, when you got past that. Maybe to you, mutters Reese. The way she used to look at me, you'd think I'd rolled in something foul every morning before school. Same here, says Kanika, though to be fair, the feeling was more mutual between us. She deserved it, though. Yeah, let's go, let's go main side. Like, the thing is, like, Kerry really doesn't want to go to this dinner, so she's just basically going to look around and remain silent. Reese's mum sat in the kitchen. Dinner's on the table, she yells. Guess that's it for catching up, says Reese. Make sure you all wash your hands with soap, says Dr. Kelly. 
I don't want anyone selling her germs at the dinner table. So sort of thing, Doc, so Stella. Street smarts lie. I already washed them. No. Yeah, like, the thing is, like, Carrie's gonna go wash her hands, to be honest. Not saying anything. No, no, you saying anything here. It's probably just just to silently comply. Plus, it allows you to look around the house. You make your way towards the sink, but but are stopped in your tracks by a pull of, pull of an odd door at the end of the hallway. It feels out of place, like you accidentally wandered into a hospital waiting room. But more than that, you can feel something radiating out from behind it, something dark and cold, something that reminds you of the dusty tunnels you narrowly escaped last night. Oppressive hum just beyond your hearing fills the air, and you feel strange. You are compelled to approach the door, drawn in as if hypnotised. No we have to open the door. Before you know it, the doorknob is turning in your hand, your heart full of both deep dread and compulsion, and compulsive need to know what might be on the other side. What do you think you're doing, says Dr. Kelly? Well... Explore smart, street smart lie. Just cleaning this doorknob. I was just cleaning the doorknob. Dr. Kelly now has her eyes with suspicion. Well, less about cleaning my doorknobs and more about cleaning your hands. Come on, everyone's waiting for you. You won't let her. You would won't let her intrude. You need to know what's behind the door. Oh no, you don't. Come on, wash your hands. Sit down. She grabs you by the soda, yanking you away. You do as she says, cleaning up under your her watchful eye and allowing yourself to be ushered back to the table and away from the door. Dinner is already laid out. Dinner rolls, spaghetti and a light salad. Kanika anxiously picks at her food. Stella is nervously talkative and Reese is suddenly quite intense. His soda is tight as his mother perches on the chair next to his. Doctor's eyes Dr. Kelly's eyes, you eyes all of you with sharp, fierce gaze. It's interesting because look, if you look at their art style, um, he has pointed ears and long nails. I wonder what he is. Like, probably Carrie would pick up, there's something odd about him. He's very slim. She sits opposite you at the head of the far head of the table, her features silhouetted against the light of the setting sun in the window behind her. Street smarts, giving her protectiveness towards Reese. You find it odd that he's seated between the two of you, rather than the other way around. It's almost as if she's guarded, not only towards you and Stella and Kanika, but towards her son as well. Pills. He slides a few tablets. She slides a few tablets towards Reese. He obediently swallows them. Is it excellent, Doctor Kelly? Is the pasta sauce homemade, to Stella? No, it's from a jar. I work too much, too many hours to make my own pasta sauce, says Dr. Kelly. Well, you have an excellent taste in brands. If you ever want any tips on easy home cooking pasta sauces, I know, you know, I... No thanks, Stella. I have the internet if I need recipes, says the doctor. Uh, thanks again for having us, Dr. Kelly. We really appreciate it, mutters Kanika. You didn't tell me they came by yesterday, says Reese. We were asleep. I didn't want to wake you up, says Dr. Kelly. But you could have told me, he says. Why? We are coming over today anyway, says the doctor. We would just rather know these things, mutters Reese. Noted. His mother mutters. Street smarts, noted. But she won't do anything about it. Her son will remain in the dark. This is this is gonna get interesting. People are basically saying they'd be interesting when Kelly gets to this pit that gets to this point. Um, explore. You know, I I think I saw a video online about a family like yours. Turns out the mum was poisoning her kids for 18 years. Um, no, let's just let's oh let's um, let's do small talk. The food's really good. You say. 
and please send a letter thank thanking the mass manufacturer of the spaghetti sauce and pasta. I just heated them up, says Dr. Kelly. I don't like wasting air at the dinner table, so keep your vulgar polite nicety to yourself, or the rest of us finish our plates. Keen eyed Dr. Kelly eyes briefly nervously glanced towards her son before fitter, fitter, flittering back to a position of annoyance. You can't help but feel like you saw what you saw went beyond compassionate worry to genuine fear. Let's go, what was Stella and Kanika like as kids? Noisy and messy, like all kids, says Dr. Kelly. Keen eye, there's suddenly a, a wistful look in her eyes, like she glimpses back to some brighter time in her life. Kanika softens too, her shoulders lowering from the, defense, from the defensive place by her ears. And they always had these little projects, videos or crafts or animals, rescues, whatever it was, they had captured their imagination that week. Keen eye, the glimmer of joy at the corner of her eye fades, her glower returns in its place. So like I said, noisy and messy. Didn't we bring a dead squirrel to your house once? Said Stella. Oh god, not the squirrel, mutters Kanika. I remember that squirrel. Didn't you Didn't you think Doc could Frankenstein it back to life or something? I was like 12, says Kanika. I was very susceptible to what I saw in the media. And very sad about that squirrel. At one of the, it's one of those things that keeps you me up at night. I still feel guilty about bringing it about that thing to your house, Dr. Kelly. I'm just glad you didn't have, didn't make it a habit, says the doctor. I really want to ask this one explore. You know, I think I saw a video online. But yeah, let's, I really want to do this because like it's, it'd be the thing is like, she's been really like getting in Kelly's way and it would be something that like Kelly would say to basically get back. But I think we'll do do some more small talk. Let's go. My cousin says he admires you. Let's say let's say that. My cousin says he admires you. Says Kerry. Really? I didn't think Tabitha could look up to anyone who isn't a Scarlet. Says Kanika. You just don't. You just don't get to know. You just didn't get to know her, says Stella. She had tons of inspirations. Rockefeller, Kanigi, Ford. Uh, that's even worse, says Kanika. If she admires me so much, she, she wouldn't be afraid to come in for her yearly physical, says, the, says Dr. Kelly. Especially since her aunt and now her mother passed away at such relatively young ages. And I think the woman in the previous generation fared even worse than that. I can't remember the last time I saw her in my office. She should get her priorities straight. You can tell her I said that. Maybe she'll listen to family. Talk about Reese. Your son is a very talented artist. You must be very proud of him. That's Kerry. He has a lot of skill, honed through practice and dedication. I can't say I understand all of his pieces, but of course I'm proud. Thanks, Doc, says Reese. Yeah, I'm gonna ask. Let's gonna go. I'm gonna explore. You know, I, I saw a video online about a family like yours. Turned out the mum was kind of poisoning a kid for ten years. Um, no, I, what I think I will do. We're gonna do small talk. We're gonna go. We're going to go with explore. Yeah. Why didn't you want me poking around the clinic? You seem awfully guarded about me checking out that door. Because it's closed. Doctors don't usually just let people wander around their clinics. Of course, Dr. Kelly. We would never. I'm so okay, it's just joking, right, Kerry? Says Kanika. You know, I can't say I have I felt You know, I can't say I ever felt drawn to the place before, but secrecy is starting to make it feel awfully compelling, says Stella. 
Stella, don't you think of getting any ideas from Kerry? As a doctor, no one is playing hide and seek in my private offices. Not today, not ever. Kerry, don't... Kerry, she doesn't need any more bad influences. Yeah, but what if it's haunted? This place was built out of an old Civil War hospital, right, says Stella? It was a TB, it was a TB clinic too, says Reese. Doubly haunted, says Stella. Can't believe I never went ghost hunting here. Are you sure you didn't want us to check it out? We have a whole bunch of extra experience after tonight. It's not haunted, now drop it, says the doctor. You can feel the tents at the table start to rise. See, as you start to push her buttons, she becomes more and more, um, sort of threatening. Let's go with the danger. Let's go with... You're a doctor, do you think those kids are okay? Let's go with that. You're a doctor, do you think those kids are okay? It's possible. We'll see, says Dr. Kelly. In the meantime, I'm just stuck here waiting for the call. Here's hoping it doesn't come. An anxious silence descends on the deep dinner table. Aside from Rita's mum staring down the table, nobody's making eye contact with anyone else. Goes, do you know a Sam Wayne? Sam Wayne, says Dr. Kelly. Dr. Kelly takes a moment to think. No, it doesn't ring a bell. Someone you know. Someone who's been following Kelly around. Super mysterious guy, says Stella. You have reason to believe he might have caught some kind of weird illness at the mine. He definitely looks like he could use medical help, so please, let us know if he sews up or anything. If there's someone harassing you, you should go to the police and vote. Get the police involved. This isn't any of my business, says Dr. Kelly. Let's see. Um, we've done a lot of the small talk. With Reese, the thing is, though, if you start pu pushing buttons too much, it's gonna basically make her snap. So, Kelly, who can, sorry, Kerry, who can read people, um, can probably tell that. Let's go with the danger, and we'll go... Have you contacted the... Have the police contacted you about Duke's body yet? I last I heard they hadn't heard, found it. Let's go with... Have you seen any hairless creatures? Like, no, let's go have... Have you seen any sick animals lately? Let's go with that. I'm a doctor, not a vet, says, says Dr. Kelly. Didn't someone come in with a sick cow last week, said Reese. Yes, but it's not like I examined the thing. I told them what I just told you and sent them on their way. You said it had lumps. So it had lumps, but I assume it was suffering from some, car some cow disease. It's not something I've done much research on. I don't know how normal it is for cow to be covered in lumps. Doesn't that sound like it's things? Are no farm animals safe from their devious clutches? Dr. Kelly, in Stella's footage, it looked like there was something pupating inside one of the cow, one of the Duke, one of Duke's chickens. I bet those were the lumps on the cow. We really should have taken a look. You could have made discoveries previously unknown to the scientific world. I would have spread some new horrible, horrible disease to my chronically ill son, says the doctor. I'll leave those discoveries to someone else. The more you talk, the less. You feel like you're having a conversation, the more like you feel like you're trading in egg cells. Yeah, I'm going to go with this one. It's like, Kerry's... I'm going to push this button. I'm going to push this button. Here we go. It'd probably be something that Kerry says, because Kerry doesn't really care what people think. So, and the thing is, like, this woman is, like, pushing her button, so she's going to push back. So let's do it. You know, 
I think I saw a video online about a family like yours. It turns out the mum has been poisoning the kid for 18 years. The dinner table goes, goes, table goes quiet. Oh yeah, I think I saw that one too. Weird stuff, says Stella. Is that so, says Dr. Kelly. Silence returns, seconds feel drawn out like minutes. The tent at the table reaches a breaking point. All right, that's enough, says Dr. Kelly. Dr. Kelly is interrupted by Reese before she can finish her thought. So, we were talking about watching a movie sometime this week, says Reese, while Kelly is still in town. We'll have to see how you feel, says the doctor. I can handle a movie, Doc, says Reese. Yeah, we'll just sit downstairs in the dark. Reese is used to that. I'm sure he'll be okay. You always overestimate how much you're able to do, Reese. This is why you keep getting sick. If I get sick, so what? It's not likely there's ever going to be a change, says Reese. I'm sick every day, and I'm not getting any better. I don't want to spend the last few miserable years of my life holed up in my in a basement alone just because seeing my friends has been deemed too strenuous, he mutters. I'm an adult, for God's sake. I can't believe I have to ask for permission for my mum to have friends over, but his sentence is cut off. Rhys stops mid-sentence, wincing in pain and wrapping himself in his arms. Don't say things like that. I'm doing everything I can to try and fix. Silence as Dr. Ice as do as doctor's eye as Dr. Kelly's eyes suit open. Reese, says Stella. Reese abruptly pulls himself from the table and leaves. Damn it, I knew it. I knew this would be too much. Everyone, get out of my house, please. Just leave us alone. Stop trying to interfere with his life. All it does is hurt him more. But can't we just leave? But we can't just leave him like this, says Kanika. Now is when he needs friends the most, says Stella. No, now is when he needs me the most. I'm his doctor and his mother, says Dr. Kelly. I know you care about him, I know that, and he knows it too. But all any of you can do is get in the way. So just leave, please. You have stuff to do anyways, says Kinnick, says Kerry. Let's go with that. You have stuff to do anyways, says Kerry. Good. Then go away and do it so I can focus on taking care of my son, snaps back. Dr. Kelly. But a few of you rush to the door. Be back, Reese, says Stella. I hope you feel better soon, says Kanika. Dr. Kelly shuts the door in your faces. The click of a lock signals the end of your dinner at Reese's. Did you really think Reese's mum is poisoning him? If she is, I swear to God, says Kanika. She wouldn't. She's, that's just so horrible. Who could do something like that to their own kid and for so long, says Stella. No, no, there's no way. You're all barking up the wrong tree, says Stella. It seems far-fetched. And it's definitely rare, but I don't think we can rule it out, says Kanika. Let's go with explore. Something weird happened when I went towards my hands. It was like I was forced to try and break into the clinic, says Kerry. Forced how, says Kanika. It was like something was making me go there, you reply. I wonder, was it like the car thing in the pit last night before you had that seizure? It was kind of like you were hypnotized. I didn't really have a good angle from the top of the ladder, but I guess I'll take your word for it. Hypnotism seems like a step up from what we've been dealing with, though, says Kanika. I mean, I don't know. A lot happened last night, but the whole thing was really trance-like. I guess it was kind of similar, you admit. What if there's another carving in there? That would be so weird to Stella. And it's probably be dangerous. The last time you saw one of those things, you had a Caesar and almost died. It's not like Dr. Kelly is going to let us visit again anytime soon. I don't think we have to worry about steering clear of her private offices, says Kanika. Let's go with Street Smarts. 
Did either of you get the impression that Dr. Kelly's afraid of Reese? You say. She never turned her back towards him. Are you, are you sure she just wasn't being protective, Sir Stella? I'm sure that's all that's going on, and she has a right to be, I mean. Poor guy took two bites of food and got sick immediately. I can't imagine what that's like to be both of them to go through. Yeah, but she was be but but if she was being overprotective, she'd have sat between us, says Kerry, and him. She had her she had her back to the window. That's interesting. If anyone should be afraid of anyone in that house, Reese should be afraid of his mum. I think we're both reading into things too much, says Stella. Dr. Kelly is a good per is is good people. Look, I'm just saying maybe there's more to their dynamic than just him being sick. But it's not like there's much we can do about it right now. Countess Kinika. We could probably go we should we could probably go back and forth on this for a while. Let's grab Gretchen, which appears under Stella's arm, and get going. The sun is setting and we and we wouldn't want to miss a second of ghost action. Stella hurries off down the hill, almost as if to run away from what just happened. You and Kanika follow her down the slowly darkening street. Lit by the orange hue of the setting sun, the library feels different. What was once a quaint building in a small town now stands as an imposing structure, its walls holding something that stares back at you with menace. And as you can see, folks, hiding behind the statue on the roof and in the shrubbery, ditchlings are watching us. And also, if you look to the far left window of the mayor's or hall, you can see Wayne glaring out at us from behind the full, behind the glint of the evening setting sun. Maybe Stella is right. Maybe ghosts aren't real. And the rest of, the, of tonight is going to be a pleasant break from the events of the past few days. Street smart. You can't help feel like you're about to walk into a slasher movie. You run through a mental list of everyone who's joining you. Trying to figure out if, you're, if you'll make it to the end. Who are you kidding? If anyone has final girl energy, it's Stella or Kanika. Kenai, before you enter, a pair of figures in a nearby bush catch your eye. You can't help but feel that with every passing day, the ditch things grow bolder. And with that, folks, we shall call it there for the for this this chapter of Scarlet Hollow. We will dive into actually no, no. I think I think we will enter the library. Let us, let us advance a little bit and see how things go. Dressed as its interior was intimidating in the setting sun, the inside of the library is dark, its shadows deep and foreboding. The meet and greet with the mayor ended some, some, quite some time ago, and the throngs of visitors took whatever joy was in this place with them as they left. Hey Oscar, are you back yet, says Stella? Shush, you can't yell in the library, chastises Kanika. It's against the rules. It's after hours, laughs Stella. Rules only apply before 5pm. Now it's our domain. Hey, you're here sooner than I expected. Hope dinner went okay. Yeah, it went okay, mutters Kanika. Reese wasn't feeling up for a long hangout, unfortunately. And Stella. I'm sorry to hear that, says Oscar. It's okay, it just means we have more time to hunt ghosts. I've come fully loaded, got my EMF reader, temperature go gauge, spirit box, infrared camera, UV light, video cameras, salt, flashlights for everybody in case the ghost messes with electricity, parabolic microphone, sharpies, and the paper for automatic writing, matches, and candles for rituals, declares Stella. Oh, and a Ouija board. I know, I know they're toys, but you never know what might come in handy. Well, that's a lot of ghost hunting stuff for something that was so last minute. Do you just have this stuff ready to go in a bug out bag or something? Inquires Kanika. Of course I do. I actually stashed a couple of bags here overnight after I got back from the mines, says Stella. Excuse me? Says Oscar. I wasn't about to carry everything around all day. 
this was this way we could get we can go in light and pop up pop up to grab more stuff once things start getting spooky. I I may never have found any compelling evidence for ghosts, admit Stella, but it's not for lack of trying, and after last night I'm more than ready to try again. Let's see. This whole town is one big supernatural death trap. Explore Kenai. I've got a bad feeling about this. There are ditch things in the bushes outside. Yeah. I've got a bad feeling about this. I'm just carrying. There are ditch things in the bushes outside. Who knows how many more are, are lurking around here? That's concerning, mutters Kanika. Are we sure it's safe to be around them? If Sylby's right, we're only going to see more of them as time goes on. We can't let them get in the way of things. The whole, whole town is a supernatural death trap. Let's go with that. This whole town is a supernatural death trap, matters Kerry. I swear, it's not usually like this, matters Stella. It's a really nice place to visit most of the time. Just not this week, apparently. Yeah, you can tell them all. The, you can tell from all the sutted storefronts and jaded residents. Maybe this place has been a metaphoric death trap for a long time, matters Kinika, and it's decided to a little bit more obvious about it now. Yo, dudes. Sorry, yo, don't rush off ghost hunting of Alf Zan, Zenny. No way, I'm going to forget your promise, Stella. Says Zane. Zane. Zane, glad you could make it. I was confronted with my own mortality for the first time yesterday, so I am desperate for answers about the afterlife to ease my troubled mind, says the teenager. Now let's go let's go mess with some ghosts. I hope my house is big enough for five ghost hunters at once. If this is if this is everyone, we can go ahead and get started. It's through the back, follow me. You and your companions grab some equipment from one of Stella's carefully stashed bug out bags before heading towards the junction, connecting Oscar's house to the library. Looks like the sun is almost set. This is when stuff usually starts to kick off. I haven't been back inside for about a week, so I have no idea what to expect. Hey, Rosalina's voice echoes down the passageway. There's no way you're doing this without me, says the teenager. Rosalina, we talked about this. No, you talked at me about it. I'm sick of other people making decisions for me. I just want to be able to live in our house again. I'm going in there and sleeping in my room tonight, no matter what, says Rosalina. Uh, like, Kerry doesn't care. Let Oscar handle this. You decide it's best to let Oscar handle this. Rose, Rosa, it could get dangerous in there. Just hang out in the library and we'll have this taken care of in a few hours. I don't want to be coddled just because you're scared. If Zane is coming, I have every right to be there. She's got a good point, Mr. G. You're right. I'm sorry, Rosalina. Just let me know if it gets too much and, we'll, and you want to leave, okay? Thanks, Dad. Now let's get our house back. And with that, folks, I think we will leave it there. This is a good stopping point. You've just entered the house. And, well, for those of you who saw my last series, well, my other series on Scarlet Hollow, you know how this is going to play out. For I get the feeling this is going to be a lot darker than, well, I could say a lot darker what happened at the end of that of that that series of this game wasn't particularly pleasant either, but that's for next time I've been Cornish Knight, this has been Scarlet Hollow and I shall see you all again last next time please like and subscribe, it helps me a lot goodbye <laughs>